Hello and welcome to Big Deal. I'm Nisha Poddar. Now, while the equity markets are soaring and private equity firms are enthused about India investments, let's gauge one important indicator which defines the investor sentiment, the fundraising activity. Last year, the homegrown private equity firms have seen a substantial uptick in the amount of funds raised over the previous year, while the venture capital firms saw a drop. Let's find out how's the investor sentiment this year and the fundraising activity and LP mindset. We are joined by today Shri Krishna Dwaram of uh, True North. We also have Neha Grover of IFC and Sudhir Sethi of Chirate Ventures India Advisors. Welcome lady and uh, gentlemen uh, to CNBC TV 18. Neha Grover, beginning with you, IFC is a large LP in India, how do you see the current investment sentiment when it comes to India focus? So, uh, India is a shining uh, spot, a bright spot in the global economy across emerging markets. IFC is a long-term investor in the country. Uh, we invested, we started investing in India as early as 1958, and we were one of the earliest investors with the uh, uh, SDFC with uh, some of the largest corporations like Bharti Airtel. Uh, we've been investing in the private equity industry in India since the late 90s. Um, so over three decades, um, we deploy, last year we deployed about $3 billion. Uh, we deployed and mobilized $3 billion uh, in the country. So India is definitely one of our focus areas. It's one of our largest country allocations uh, globally across emerging markets, single country exposure. All right. Uh, so single uh, country exposure wise uh, amongst the emerging markets, India stands uh, the uh, highest rank right now for IFC. Now, uh, when we talk about this, Sri Krishna, there has been various global factors as well as a rebalancing, which has really led to this India focus. What are your thoughts on that? At firstly, I think I would agree with Neha that uh, amongst all the investor feedback that we are receiving, the um, interest on India has certainly been one of the highest. And that's not surprising given uh, the fact that the last five to 10 years, we've seen a, a high level of macroeconomic stability. Just the performance of the industry itself has improved so much. And generally, there is an agreement that the market has matured substantially. The private equity in industry and the VC market has matured substantially. Uh, having said that, I think there are a few other global trends that we need to keep in picture, which is the fact that the amount of money that, that is available to be invested by all our LP community has, I think, reduced over the last couple of years because the liquidity that they were receiving from their existing investments have has reduced. And the second is uh, there is in generally a flight to safety amongst the investors. They are trying to find uh, safer locations, which meant that the money that uh, is getting concentrated in one uh, U.S. or emerging uh, developed market and to maybe uh, getting concentrated among larger uh, players as opposed to being more distributed. Uh, uh, having said that, uh, this is a very long-term uh, um, uh, investment game. So people come with a 10-year uh, point of view. And my general view on India as an investment destination is, I think, the strongest ever compared to the last many years. And that's well deserved because the industry has also performed well. Right. Uh, you know, Shri Krishna, the kind of uh, confidence that you are exuding is re resonating all across the entire the overall financial services, corporates, investors and uh, overseas players alike who are looking into India. Uh, but Sudhir, when it comes to the venture capital uh, space, Sri Krishna mentioned that the overall ecosystem of homegrown uh, in, uh, funds and uh, homegrown investment firms has really matured over uh, the last few years. Now, how do you see the venture capital uh, fundraising trends for this particular year? Last year was a drop over 2022. So I think the trends are similar. Interest in India high, a lot of people wanting to learn, but let me break it up into three categories. Um, first and foremost, uh, we as VCs uh, have raised capital from India out of our one plus billion dollars, about half a billion has come from India. And that's a very important thing. So LPs or potential LPs, the way I view it, are global LPs and Indian investors, potential LPs and existing LPs. Indian LPs are more allocating to the alternative asset class 
and uh, much more savvy, much more depth studies uh, in the market space and more, more money is being allocated. There's no question about it. I would say the bulk is family offices, but institutions have started coming in uh, like banks, of course. Uh, I think once RBI issues the, the clearances, uh, hopefully more banks will come in. Insurance uh, coming in, there's no question about it. So India is, from an LP perspective, a very good market, uh, which we have benefited from only because of the fact that we are based in India and the knowledge levels about the Indian market are very high there. As far as globals are concerned, the way I, I would put it is uh, existing LPs and new LPs. If I take existing LPs, the existing LPs uh, are fundamentally re-upping, there's no question, but reducing also the number of uh, GPs because they want lesser GPs to manage and not more GPs to manage. And there, uh, re-ups are happening. Check sizes are broadly similar in nature. Maybe a few uh, uh, are getting higher, but broadly are similar in nature. I think the other thing which is very, very high from existing LPs and it impacts new LPs is how much have you returned? Yes. Uh, we returned almost $200 million of capital last year. We returned $850 million over the last 12 years. And to that extent, more and more VCs have to return capital and not just have NAVs being high. So to that extent, the holy grail is not whether capital is available or not. The holy grail is how much have you returned to your existing LPs and whether they'll re-up. Uh, is it 85%, it is 100%, is it 60 or 50 or 40? Uh, and new LPs will go by that. Hmm. So I think the fundraising markets for VCs, especially because the in the technology space, uh, you know, there are many uh, which are doing better. However, one thing is there is India has a lot. I mean, there are hundreds of new GPs, first time managers, second time managers. And there are a lot of people like us who have been around for 15, 16, 17 years, five, six funds under our belt. So it's a very diverse market for LPs to pick up in this growth pattern, uh, which has happened in the last five years. So I would say overall, very good. Hmm. There's no question about it. But VCs have to deliver exits. That's right. Uh, the proof of investing is in the exits as well as the returns. Neha Grover, uh, what do you have to uh, say about the India deployment and the factors which have led to that? Uh, of course, India-specific factors are there. China plus one factor is there. But many global events have also given India an advantageous position. Yeah, I think uh, the biggest uh, uh, sort of uh, factors are the structural factors in India, right? Uh, if you look at uh, private equity across the globe, across emerging markets, uh, growth equity or growth investing uh, is only possible where there is high growth, where there's consistent growth over, over a decade or so. And that's what we've seen in India because of the structural factors like uh, the domestic, the demographic dividend, uh, the uh, sort of um, uh, the policies, uh, supportive policies, industries, um, we've 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 got all the building blocks in place. Uh, I think uh, what um, uh, Sudhir also alluded to, the other important piece is that uh, twenty years ago, if you look at the industry, there were not too many experienced fund managers. Um, today, there are a lot of experienced teams, there are a lot of experienced team manage, uh, fund managers who've been investing in India, who've seen cycles, and therefore, uh, you know, as LPs, they give us a lot of confidence that they can manage uh, investments and exits through cycles. The third factor is the actual performance, mm. uh, which is uh, exits. If you look at the last five years alone, India, uh, the Indian private equity and VC industry has has uh, um, exited about $100 billion uh, and invested about $200-$250 billion. That's a pretty high number for exits, which, uh, you know, if you compare the same number 20 years ago, 15 years ago, or even a decade ago, uh, the exit numbers are very, very small. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that gives the confidence to LPs like us uh, that it is just not... Uh, we're not investing on a promise or a vision or a story. There are returns being delivered and there is money being returned to LPs. Uh, so I think it's a combination of all of these factors. Right. Uh, many points and many takeaways from there, Neha Grover, and many things really working in favor of uh, India. But Sri Krishna, when you 
uh, set out to speak to LPs. What is their big concern coming out and uh, what is uh, their sentiment uh, about India? What are the basic tenets of investing and looking at India according to you? Yeah, I think there is, uh, I, I, I definitely sense that there is a lot of optimism. I, mean, I will put it as, let's say three sets of investors. Uh, one who have actually a long experience of investing in India, like people like Neha, and, but many others who have, uh, who have had a long experience of investing in India. And, and we have to accept the fact that not all of that experience has been satisfactory, uh, uh, definitely on a relative basis compared to various other geographies that they've invested in. That's one. Second, there are others who are just, uh, uh, who have had experience, not had good experience, went away. Uh, and the third are completely new investors who we have actually in, uh, uh, encountered now uh, for the first time. Um, uh, they are good names, but they never invested in India till now. In all three categories, I think there is a high level of optimism, but yes. the actions that they are taking are a little different. Uh, I think the third category are very, very enthusiastic and many of them have taken uh, a decision that they will definitely want to have a certain kind of an exposure. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of an exposure uh, may be different. So some people are trying trying to invest directly in companies as opposed to coming through funds. That's yes. also been new uh, new uh, experience that we are seeing. And then there are people who are investing in funds like us or many other options that they have. Uh, that's one. Second, as I mentioned, right, there are actually a lot of people who are playing India by increasing their exposure to funds, which are far more diversified in terms of their geographic exposure, but they're rebalancing their portfolios by having higher investments in India, people, large global funds or pan-Asian funds, etc., which are uh, significantly increasing their exposure to India. So that's the, the that's the other thing. Yes. I think that for people who have a lot of experience of already having invested in India, the key question in my mind, which is the question that you asked, what is the risk, is, uh, is, this, uh, is this going to sustain? Yes. Uh, because in the past, there has been a lot of promise of a very high quality delivery, but that delivery hasn't happened. We genuinely yeah. believe, uh, obviously we have, we have a bias, but uh, I think we genuinely believe that this is not the same as 10 years ago. Yes. And the reason for that is for all the, for all the things that we have said, Neha said, I have said that these are, this is a mature market. This is no longer the same as investing in um, companies and expecting that we will all, everything will be okay. I think this is genuinely driven by value creation. Yes. And one additional factor I just want to leave uh, this is an argument that I make to most of the LPs that I encounter and many of them have significant exposure to the US market and that is their safe haven, normally speaking. And yes. the argument that I make is that what has driven the returns in US and US has been a consistent 20 year plus performer for this industry uh, for LPs uh, is not, not the same in terms of the uh, context right now. I mean, the last 20 years, the returns have been largely delivered because of the availability of cheap leverage, whereas we have delivered uh, just by value creation in terms of revenue growth, margin expansion, et cetera, with absolutely limited or uh, no presence of leverage. Right. Right. So I think uh, this is more sustainable is what I argue. Obviously. All right. So emphatic pitch point there, uh, Shri Krishna, from your end. But I would just add that it's a combination of many factors. I hear a lot of private equity, global private equity firms increasing their India allocation. Uh, they are euphoric. Also, exit mechanism through the stock market block deals has given a lot of confidence. So, it's a combination of various factors. And, of course, uh, another important aspect is political in nature. Uh, they foresee a sustainability or a continuity in the political scenario and more stability. And that's also something that is spurring their confidence. We'll talk more about now, where is this money really going to go to and what are the theme sectors that are really picking up on the other side? Stay tuned to Big Deal.